So we're doing a review on the Pulsar Telos XP50 monocular. We're going to take a look at remote mounting this, how the Wi-Fi performance is to our tablet, um, how stable it is, things like that. We're going to take a look at the image quality, whether it be through onto the tablet or when you're using it by hand and looking through it. Um, then we're going to show you how to actually use the device, what the buttons do, and all the dials do, as well as go in depth on the menu system and how to operate that. So let's get into it. Hope you enjoy. All right, let's take a look at the image quality here. We have our dogs here at 20 meters, 100, 200, and 300. So you can sort of compare the image quality at different distances here. The image quality is exceptional with a 640 pixel 18 millikelvin sensor at a base mag of 2.5. So the unit has a good lineup of specs, offering quite a wide field of view, which is exceptional for remote mounting or use by hand. The detection range is out to 1800 meters. Overall, a very good image with exceptional specs as well as a nice wide field of view. So here we have some kangaroos that I estimate. Now this is an estimation, about 150 meters. At the most, maybe closer. See, then the dog at 300 there, the kangaroo at around that 150 mark uh, looks quite good. So we're at 10 times digital zoom now on that kangaroo. So there's our kangaroos and our dog at 300 meters in the background there. So. So quite good, like I honestly think the image quality is very good. Um, now I can't say it's better than everything else, but it's definitely up there with the best. Um, and I have no problem using this device by hand or remote mounted. If you have any more questions, buddy, feel free to give me a ring. I'm happy to help you um, if you have any other concerns or questions about this device. So over here we have some cattle. Now they're probably a good 200 meters away. Amongst the trees there, we have another kangaroo coming in here now. And then we'll keep going. What else can we see? Oh, we've got a little kangaroo just here, pretty close to us. All right, so we have a couple of kangaroos here. They are pretty close, um, definitely within 100 metres, probably about 70 metres. You can see he was having a bit of a scratch there um, and uh, having a feed there. And the other big fella there standing up, having a look around. Here we have a kangaroo about to hop across the track. Um, he's probably within sort of a hundred meters. And then we've got another fella here within sort of 50, roughly. Not a bad, not a bad route. And we've got a little wallaby here, very close, probably within 30 meters. And some cattle here within about the same, about 30 to 50 meters. Got a heap of cattle here walking along the edge of the track. And uh, yeah, everything looks pretty darn good. All right, so we're doing a test on the Telos XP50. Uh, we're doing the uh, Wi-Fi testing at the moment, wirelessly mounted, okay? So we've got this mounted up on our roof, much the same as how we do our other Wi-Fi tests. Um, now this unit does have five gigahertz Wi-Fi. I'm expecting the 5 gigahertz to not be as affected by interference as the 2.4 gigahertz is on many of the other brands. Now this unit doesn't have the rangefinder on it um, and is one of the very few uh, Pulsar units that has a flat bottom with a mounting point on the bottom which I've never understood why they put the mounting point in weird places Pulsar does but this particular unit's good. It would just be better if it had the rangefinder. We will take a look at the rangefinder version of this at a later date, um, but this is what we're looking at tonight. So let's compare the image quality that we see through the thermal to what we see on the tablet. So far, I've been quite impressed with it. So I've got a kangaroo out here now. That's um, probably about 200 meters, roughly 150 meters. Um, and it looks quite good. As you can see, we don't have significant amounts of pixelation or anything like we see on some of the other thermals on the market from time to time. Um, a good indication of that is when you look at the sky 
it's pretty good one of the better ones that i've seen so that's what i'm seeing you can see all the detail in the tree there but one thing i've noticed straight away is the smoothness it's very very smooth the wi-fi is very very smooth even with the interference from the stereo um, which on other thermals i get a lot of um, issues with um, which is quite interesting i'm very surprised by that um, it very rarely ever glitches so that's um, a really good sign we've got good image quality coming through the tablet now this is a samsung tablet okay unfortunately at the time of filming this on apple devices um, you can't go full screen so see how this is full screen on the samsung um, on apple ipads at the time of filming you can't go full screen um, so as you can see we've got kangaroos out in the paddock here and um, it actually looks really nice to be completely honest i haven't been impressed with what pulsar has been doing for the last two years or year and a half they sort of fell behind but with some of this new stuff coming out now um, i've been pleasantly surprised uh, for the first time in a while um, they definitely stepped it up with their new units with their new sensors um, and this Wi-Fi experience is quite good and image quality is a lot better than I was expecting. Definitely a better result than what I got on the Axion. All right, let's compare the image quality we see through the thermal with what we actually get on the screen. Now, as you can see, the detail there in the grass, the detail on the kangaroo, um, the detail on the tree there, quite hard to do this so just bear with me um, it looks very good through the thermal take that in and we'll go in and have a look on the cab so look at the tree and look at the roof um, and we're just, just specifically looking at the detail mainly like how clear it is versus how pixelated it could be all right back in the cab here now and we can see now that i've compared it i can see a lot more um, pixelation there than what you see through the thermal but overall it's still very very good the fact that we can actually see the bark and detail on that tree is a good indication um, if you get a lot of um, pixelation it'll start blending in the tree trunks all into one color so we can still make out the branches and everything and the kangaroo there but i was hoping that kangaroo would lift his head up but he just doesn't want to but that gives you an indication of the uh, quality versus what you see through it versus what you get on the wireless. It's quite good. Um, I would be happy with that. Um, some thermals I've tested at this distance on a roo, you wouldn't even be able to tell it's a kangaroo. So I'd give it a rating of probably 85% out of 100. So basically what you see through the thermal versus what you get on the monitor is about 85%, which is quite good some thermals i've seen it wouldn't even be 50 percent of what you see through it so i'm very impressed with that now once again this is on android on a samsung the latest samsung tablet s9 yeah keep that in mind all right now we're going to take a look at actually the option in the app and how you connect to the actual thermal itself so we'll close down out of the app so basically you've got to download the stream vision app from the play store or the app store and um, and then once you've done that on the thermal itself you go into the settings and you turn the wi-fi on once you've turned the wi-fi on you actually need to go into the wi-fi settings on the thermal and turn the five gigahertz on okay so you want to change it from 2.4 to 5 gigahertz now that'll give you the best experience with the least amount of uh, interference and glitching okay and once you have done that you'll open up the settings app on your phone here you'll go to wi-fi you'll see telos show up as a network that you can connect to and once you've done that the default password is one two three four five six seven eight um, you can actually change that in the um, thermal if you want to but once you've connected to it so we've clicked on it and we've put in the password then we open up our stream vision app now, once we've done that, it should automatically detect the device. If it doesn't automatically detect it, close the app down and reopen it so it refreshes. 
Um, now, once you've done that, you click Viewfinder, and then we get this um, settings here now. So now we're gonna go through the options that you actually have in the app. So if you just tap the screen, it'll make the menus on the left and right hand side show up and disappear. And then on the right hand side, we have the record button here, obviously. Um, and then we have our amplification level that we can adjust. So I've got mine set on the middle one. As you can see, the image changes as I go through these. Usually the middle value is the most appropriate. And then we have our uh, palettes. So our next option down is our palette changer. Now in here, we can go to our black hot. We can go to our uh, red hot. And then we have our red monochrome. Rainbow. Ultra marine, eh? And then we have violet. And then we have sepia. Now, as with just about any thermal on the market, the most appropriate is black and white hot. And for some people, they might like the red hot, but for the most cases, white and black, black hot is what people prefer. Now, usually I wouldn't say white or black hot, um, one or the other is better. It would just be what you get used to. So I'm used to using white hot. I've used white hot nearly since the beginning of getting a thermal. So that's what my eyes are adjusted to. If you use black hot, that's how you your eyes will be adjusted as well. Now, as you'll see, that actually drowns out a lot of the detail on the trees for some reason. When I go to black hot, I'll go back to white hot and we see more detail for some reason. So on our left side here, we have our settings button opens up the settings for the app and then we have our calibration button. Now that'll do a manual calibration. Then we have our picture in picture mode that just creates a five times zoom level um, in the center of the screen. So as you can see, we've got that five times zoom level on that kangaroo feeding there. That's the standard and that's the five times zoom. Um, which is quite good at that distance. Now, moving on, um, on the left-hand side here, we have our contrast, which allows us to adjust the contrast, as you can see. Now, if you adjust this, depending on the um, color palette you're using, maybe you'll get a better result. Now, the next one down is brightness. And once again, we can adjust this to suit our preferences. We can have it super bright, but I think it was set on about seven or eight. Once we're in the viewfinder of the device, if we click the settings icon up the top, it actually takes us to the settings of this device. So we can actually um, turn some of the settings on and off. So the smooth, the smoothing filter, um, we can do change how the calibration works, automatic stuff like that. We can, um, decide whether it saves the videos to the device or to the phone or the tablet. I would highly recommend leaving it on device because what that's going to do is give you the best image recording quality. Um, I'm not going to go through all these, but unit, user mode, we've got format so we can wipe the device, motion detection. To be honest, I haven't had a chance to play with that, so I couldn't tell you what that does just yet. If we go over here, we have our back arrow, which will take us back to the main menu of the Pulsar Stream 2 app. Now, if we go gallery, it'll show what we've recorded on our phone. Um, and we can actually have a cloud system to store our information. Now, just to be clear, I haven't used any of this, so I'm making some assumptions on how it'll work. So imagine the cloud system works as you have your Pulsar account and you can store your photos and videos on that cloud account and sync it to your devices. Now we have news, nobody cares. If we go to settings here um, and in here we have um, some of our options here. So we actually have our device. If we click on our device settings, it'll actually bring up the firmware version, allow us to update it um, and serial number, um, and so on, just information about the 
product. And then if we want to remove the device from the app so we can re-add it, we can also do that. And you can also have connect automatic on or off there and automatic firmware updates on or off. Okay, so pretty straightforward, um, which I do like. I like straightforward things, you know what I mean? Now, there are other stuff in here um, that isn't relevant to this device, but we won't discuss that now. Now, on our device stories, we can actually connect to our device and it'll show us the stuff that is recorded on the thermal itself. So let's take a look at, say, what's this video here? We can download that, so it'll transfer it from the thermal to the actual tablet, and then it'll appear in our gallery. All right, so that's downloaded now, and we can click on it and watch it back. So this is a recording. It's quite good. Um, and now if we go back to our gallery in here, so this is the video we just downloaded off the thermal and it'll remain on the tablet now, um, even when the thermal's not connected. If we go back to device down the bottom here and we click device storage, that's where we were before. So yeah, look, I, I'll be honest, I am quite happy with this device. Um, it was easy to set up, easy to use, um, and so far I haven't had any issues with the Wi-Fi, so, but I haven't used it that long to be fair, but most thermals that I test will play up almost immediately in this vehicle because of the stereo and the amount of interference that I've managed to um, create in this vehicle. So this is basically my test vehicle. If it's not going to work in this vehicle, then it's probably going to play up for other people as well. So if I can get it to work in this car, then it's probably a high chance it's going to work for everybody else. All right, so we're going to do the unboxing on the... Pulsar Telos XP50. Now this is the non-LRF version, 640 sensor, um, 18 millikelvin, um, some very good bit of gear. So let's take a look at what you get inside the box. Very simply, you get a manual, you get a carry bag, you get all your accessories. As you can see, we've already got the thermal out. I hate doing unboxing videos to be honest because who really cares? Um, so you get your strap, charging stuff, um, and that's pretty much it. So moving on. Okay, so one of the ideas with the Telos is Pulso is saying you'll be able to send this unit back in the future to get an upgraded sensor. So they're saying that they can actually put a new sensor in this unit. Where is that a good idea? I don't know, yet to see. Okay, now let's take a bit of a closer look at the device itself. So we've got our four buttons here at the top. We've got our power button, our up and down arrows and function buttons, and our menu button. So the power button, we have short press to turn it on. Um, long press for three seconds or more to turn it off. Long press for less than three seconds to just put it in standby mode. And short press again to wake it up. If the thermal is awake, if you do a short press, it'll actually do a manual calibration. All right, now on to one of the arrow buttons here. A single press will start a recording or take a photo depending on which mode you have active. If you hold it in, it'll switch between photo or video mode. To save a recording once you've started, um, press and hold it down to stop and save that recording. Our other arrow button, if we single press it, it'll change the amplification levels. If we hold it in, it'll actually switch palettes. Now moving on to our Menu button, so this will allow you to access the quick menu and the main menu. To enter the quick menu, just a single press will bring up the quick menu and then you can switch between the options of the quick menu by another single press, so short press. And that'll allow you to navigate through the different options. Now these arrow buttons will allow you to um, make adjustments to the options you have selected. So up and down, increase or decrease value type situation, and a long press to close down the quick access menu. 
Now to access our main menu, we simply press and hold in the menu button here, and that'll bring up our menu on the side. Now to get, navigate our menus, we use the up and down arrow keys here, and to make changes or to move into the next subset of menus, a single press on the menu button. And if you need to go back a menu, you press and hold this button down and it'll take you back to your previous menu and then eventually it'll shut down the menu altogether. All right, let's take a bit more of a look at the design of the device. So obviously we have the buttons here. At the front here, we have our eye adjustment and then also our rubber eyepiece. Um, and then as you'll see up here, we have two rings. Now this first ring is for zooming in and out and this second ring is for focusing the thermal. Now this second ring is very, very stiff, um, which isn't a bad thing, especially if you're going to remote mount this device because you have no fear that this is going to move as you run across rough country. Now, out of pretty much the entire Pulsar range of devices, this is one of the best uh, mounting positions we've seen um, on a thermal from Pulsar. So we've been testing this remote mounted as well as by hand and it's been working very well. We haven't experienced any glitching or anything and the mounting base is uh, well and truly strong enough to handle anything you throw at it. Now obviously at the front we have our cap and our hand strap as well. And essentially that's it. We'll move on now to take a look at the battery compartment. So. So the battery life on this is amazing um, and the turn on speed is also really good. So when you turn this on, it turns on almost instantly within sort of five seconds, um, which is great. Um, so to remove this battery, you just clip that and pull it out. Now this can be charged inside the thermal as well. You don't need to take it out necessarily to charge it. Just wanted to show you a closer look at the battery pack here. You can actually pull the battery pack out and charge it directly. So if you plug your USB-C into this port here, it will charge it for you. Okay, so that's basically a quick run over of that. All right, let's uh, take a look through the uh, menu options on the Telos here. So we'll press and hold our menu button to open it up and we'll use our arrow keys to navigate. Okay, so um, now if we single press on our menu button, it'll allow us to go into the sub menus to then be able to change it with our arrow keys. So these arrow keys allow us to switch between the different settings here. Now, as you can see, the amplification is sort of, in my opinion, like, co like uh, contrast or sharpness, um, and we just have it on high. Uh, once you've found the amplification level you want, just single press to enable that and go back to the previous menu. And then we move on and we've got our color palettes. Now, if we single press on this, we can open it up and use our arrow keys to cycle through um, the different color palettes here and select which one we want. Okay, and then once we've decided which one we want, single press to go back to the previous menu. And the next option is to turn our smoothing filter on and off. And then we go down again, we've got user mode on and off. And then we go down again and we've got our icon brightness. We can change our icon brightness. And then we keep going, we've got a picture in picture. And as you can see, we've got our picture in picture there, five times zoom level. And, um, because we've got that enabled in this way, we're actually zooming on that. I don't use picture in picture on a monocular, we turn that off. And now we've got our Wi-Fi activation. Now this is important information if you're planning to remote mount this. Now, so you wanna turn your Wi-Fi on and then if you continue through the menus, go to the next page of menus by using your arrow key, you'll see Wi-Fi settings. Now single press on the menu button to open that up. And you'll see we can set the change the password if we wish, but the default password is one through to eight. Um, we can change access um, to the thermal as well. And then the most important option is the band. Okay, so um, the new Pulsar units have 2.4 and five gigahertz bands. Now the five gigahertz 
is what you want to use. You, you never want to use 2.4. Um, it just doesn't work very well. Um, and from the testing that we've done, 5 gigahertz, um, we haven't had any lag or any disturbance in our Wi-Fi experience whatsoever. Um, and then moving on, we have our microphone, which I've turned on now and is recording. So I might play a bit of that audio now with what I'm saying and um, that'll give you an idea of the quality. I'll start, I'll talk a bit quieter now. So I'm talking a bit quieter just to give you an idea of the sound quality on the microphone inside the Telos. All right, moving on. Uh, next we have general settings and uh, in here we can change the language, date, time, whether uh, units of measurements, um, video compression, whether we want um, the video files to be compressed even more. I imagine that's what it means. I honestly haven't checked to make sure, um, but um, who wants that? Nobody. So, and then we move on and we've got our default settings. We can restore everything to default and then format, which will wipe the memory of everything that you've recorded. Now, if we go back again, so a long press on the menu button will take us back to the previous menu. And then we've got our pixel, uh, defective pixel repair. If we single press on that um, and then uh, single press again, it'll bring up the uh, pixel repair. Now, what you can do here is you can move the crosshair to using your arrow keys to where the dead pixel is, then you can repair it. To do the repair, um, you press the power button, which will do the repair on that pixel, okay? Then moving on again, if you want to restore the default pixel map, you can. So if you, like just then I did a, a correction, uh, which I didn't want to do, so we will just undo the repair. Now long press on the menu button will take us back to where we were before, and then going down, we've got device information. Um, which shows um, all the information about the device. Okay, now moving on, um, I just wanted to touch a bit more on the Wi-Fi. So with Wi-Fi, um, you want to use five gigahertz and then you want to go onto your tablet or phone and then you want to go to your Wi-Fi settings on that device and you want to select Telos from the options that you have and connect it to that. You want to make sure you have the Stream Vision 2 app installed as well. Um, and once you've connected to the Wi-Fi of the thermal and open the Stream Vision app, it'll allow you to start using the device from the, the uh, tablet or phone. And it's pretty straightforward, it works quite well. Um, but you do want to use Samsung devices. At the time of filming, if you use Apple devices, it won't go full screen. So it's a pretty poor experience, but on Samsung or Android devices, um, we tested a few different ones, including cheaper tablets and dearer ones, and the results were very similar. So um, the five gigahertz definitely improves the uh, Wi-Fi experience. Now, as you can see, if I press and hold the arrow key closest to my eye, it'll switch me between uh, black hot and white hot. Okay, so now we're going to do the um, quick access menu. So a single press on the menu button will bring up this side menu. Now, if you single press again, it will continue to um, scroll through the options. Now we have brightness. If you use your arrow keys to go up and down, you can make adjustments to that menu um, option. And then a single press will go on through to contrast. Okay. And then a single press again, and we have our digital range finder. Okay, now basically the idea is this, is you use your arrow keys to move the red line, and you place the bottom red line at the bottom of the object you want to measure. So say this little white dot here was a rabbit, we put that in there, and it estimates, you want to have the animal um, in between the two lines, um, just. So it estimates that that's about 120 metres, which is about right. Now, if you move on to this big rock here, let's pretend it's a pig. Um, we can move the red line up higher. And it's about the same distance away as the other white thing, which it is correct in saying, so about 120 metres. Um, but one thing that I hate about quick access menus is they disappear way too quick. So like if I don't press a button here for like three seconds, it disappears and I've got to press the 
menu button again to open it back up. So that's how that works. I don't think it's a replacement for a normal range finder. I think it's a little bit impractical, but hey, you know, if you've got the time on your hands and you're not um, in a rush and the animal's not taken off on you, it uh, could be a handy bit of gear. Okay, so that's the quick access menu over and out. Um, before I go um, to exit the quick access menu, just wait three seconds and it'll disappear or hold down the menu button and it'll disappear, okay? Now, if you wanna buy one of these, we have them available on our website and we are doing kits, so complete remote mounted kits so that you can just buy it and go and get started. So that'll include a tablet, the mount for the tablet, um, the mounting options that you can choose for when you mount it to your roof. Um, we have all that available ready to ship to you, so go check it out.